we need to do this, y'all, because this right here, this is a good man. Yeah. <laughs> One person should have said, you, anybody want to think this through a little bit? <laughs> right. Now, now there's going to be some heavy hitters. Yeah. With, you know, with, and they're going to have choppers. We might not make it to that. We not make it. My, 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 this might be a one-way trip. But this, this, but this, this is a good man right here. Yeah. <laughs> he ain't a good man if he's about to get my black ass killed. Exactly. He ain't that goddamn good. If he was good, he wouldn't have been here in the first place uh-huh. asking for this shit. <laughs> <laughs> a good man would be at home right now chilling with his family instead of asking us to get some guns and die tonight. Let's see, let's go ahead and get into the review right now. You ready, sir? Sure. Yeah, let's go ahead and get to Let's do this. Talk about it. Hey, yo. Hey, let's do some reviews, Martin. Hey, my Tomas. <laughs> Don't get mad at us. Don't get mad at us. We just, we riffing off what we saw today, but I don't know how this happened, boy. Yeah. I don't know. Boy, I mean, this. I guess, you know, release pickings are slim. <laughs> <laughs> we really going to send it out there? We got nothing else. Just just do it. Boy, you know shit is slim when they say this is okay. <laughs> right. When they say, you know, go ahead. We got nothing else. Also, to look at this and go, huh, theatrical release, huh? Did they actually think about doing this theatrical release one time? It, it, no, no. It's, it's being... Released theatrically. I saw it on the schedule at the iPix. Oh, boy. We talking about this movie, The Appropriator. Y'all know that's a tax collector. <laughs> boy, he, 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 he taxing the Mexicans, man, for their culture. <laughs> Look at that. <laughs> Shit, I'm taking this. I'm taking this. <laughs> hey. <laughs> boy, David, David Ayers, man. Uh, David Ayer. Ayer. David yeah. Ayer. I, I, I tell you, cause yeah, with with so much that he likes to do with the with the with the East LA gangs, everything is influenced by that. The the cops or the gangs. I was like, well, shit, man. If that's where he grew up, that's what he knows. Nah, he grew up in Michigan. He this <laughs> this 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 man grew up in Michigan. He got kicked out when he was a teenager. Uh-huh. Might I add, a white teenager. <laughs> you can't get no whiter than Michigan, man. <laughs> Oh, you actually can, but that's pretty white. Well, isn't that where uh, Eminem is from? Yeah. <laughs> so I guess they just breed white people that want to be black over there. <laughs> How suffocating is the white culture where like white people just want to be just want to leave and not be white anymore? Right. <laughs> Eminem want to be black. David Ayer want to be Mexican. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. You got to figure David Ayer is to Mexicans what Quentin Tarantino is to black. People. <laughs> yeah, it is. <laughs> Shit, I'm waiting for the next white person to talk about. <laughs> 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 Yeah, man, everybody want to be something else. Yeah. But he got kicked out the house when he was a teenager. Mm -hmm. And then that's when he moved over, I think, to stay with a cousin. I'm sure this cousin was white, too. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe, you know, because at one time I thought, shit, maybe, because I had to look it up, because I thought maybe somebody put him in a basket as a baby and left him on the, in the the barrio on the porch of a, of a. Gang banging family. Oh, he's like the jerk. Yeah, yeah. They just left a little baby, little white baby for some little white baby for some gang gang bangers to adopt. But this man is from he's from the 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 hood of Michigan, and he got kicked out when he was a teenager. Went to go live with a cousin in uh in South Central LA, uh, okay. East LA, something. Anyway, yeah, he moved to LA. So it, it imprinted on him. Then, yeah. at that point. Because I because I because at first it was just kind of like oh wow you know this 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 white. Writer and director really knows the streets, man, yeah. uh, of, uh, of of South Central L.A. And then it got to the point, like, maybe after the second, third, fourth time, I was just like, no, this is my problem. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you got an addiction. Yeah, yeah. At first, it's, yeah, you go like, wow, yeah, he really knows this. And then you're like, um, you could do other things. <laughs> you can talk about something else. <laughs> you could do a, a lot of the things. Like, and, no. And it's like he said, look, I, I did Fury. Yes. What else? <laughs> Back to the gangs. <laughs> I gotta be me. Yeah. I gotta be me. <laughs> hey, you, hey, you never leave these streets off. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> hey, I gotta say, hey, man, nothing else. You keeping it real? Yeah, keeping it real. <laughs> real fake, but <laughs> <laughs> he took the whitest character ever on screen and tried to turn that motherfucker to a Mexican. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> he took the white. You don't get no whiter than the I Joker. Know. I know. I know. And turned him into a cholo. Oh my like, god damn. I mean, if that ain't projecting. You're working on a Batman related property and you gotta throw this in there. Yeah. If that ain't projecting, like he yeah. took the whitest character uh-huh. and tried to make them boogie brown, uh, bo- boogie down brown. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. 
At night, trying to turn Shia LaBeouf into a Mexican. Got him all tatted up and everything. Got Creeper. Yeah. His character's name from the movie on his chest. Yeah, right yeah, there. he really got that tattoo. Yeah, really got that tattoo right there. David Ayer says, nah, y'all got it all wrong, man. I'm actually bringing the world together <laughs> through, mm. you know, through through murder and crime. Huh. Look, if we could all gang bang together, we could all kill people and do some dirt together, no matter what color you are. <laughs> right, right. Then there's hope. Right. Because, hey, sure, <clears throat> they might be criminals and murderers and thieves. They can be family men too, just like you. Exactly. Just you, you can relate to this, right? <laughs> <laughs> hey, he loves his children just, just as much just, as you, Mark. Yeah, exactly. Except you don't kill people. No, but, no, no, I'm not extorting. But you want businesses. Are, <laughs> but hey, you weren't raised in that environment, Holmes. I'm not putting you don't poison know. out in my neighborhood. <laughs> <laughs> you don't know, man. You were raised differently. You had, hey, I, I had opportunity. <laughs> you were lucky to be born out this shit, man. <laughs> <laughs> That's how he, like I said, boy, we can all gang bang and kill people together, no matter what color we are. There's hope. Yeah. So yeah. <laughs> let's let's see if his attempts to bring to bring uh, world peace through crime can actually pay off mm. through crime and murder. Let's see if this actually works right here, as we watch the trailer. For the tax collector, and we'll be back. This will be my first time to see the trailer. <laughs> this, boy, Let me tell y'all. So I got a story to tell y'all after this, man. Martin Martin had me laughing so hard when he came in today. Has to pay the taxes. What's up, Holmes? Wake up. For real. <laughs> I mean. That that line didn't come from none of those Mexicans. That came from Shia LaBeouf. What's up, Holmes? Oh, yeah. Hey, Holmes. Yeah. <laughs> He's method. You got your wife, you got your kids, you got your castle. You're actually Mexican. <laughs> <laughs> you have everything, Holmes. <laughs> everything I want. <laughs> Open your mouth. Okay. He'll splatter your brains out. I don't want that. I do. I want that. <laughs> so Martin, 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 Martin had me laughing. Martin said, because you didn't see the trailer. I didn't for see this. the trailer. I didn't see the trailer. And the movie starts and I see... Yeah, these two guys, well, not when it starts, but the two guys, the main guy, um, Bobby Soto, um, yeah. is the actor. And I go, huh, that, that other Mexican guy looks a lot like Shia LaBeouf. If, if I didn't know better, I would think, and he takes his glasses off, and I was like, oh, shit, that is him. <laughs> <laughs> what, is, what is he doing? <laughs> is, yeah, is he going to play got Mexican you. then? Uh, 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 surprise, man. <laughs> <laughs> got you, man. Boy, you had me laughing. Like Martin see, he thought that he thought that that was a real Mexican that just looked like Shia LaBeouf. Yeah. I wish I could have been there. Like he took his glass, like, no, it's me, <laughs> man. <laughs> it is Shia LaBeouf. <laughs> now you sounded French just. Then. I know, yeah, <laughs> LaBeouf. <laughs> I am Napoleon. <laughs> <laughs> you know, the, listen. Before we get too deep into this, I'll tell you just. One thing about the movie, you look at all this, and you know this man. This is some basic gangster shit. Basic, basic, basic bitch gangster. Basic gangster revenge shit that they got going on right here, man. It's like, it's like you live in such a gang banging fantasy that you ain't even trying with the story. This is man. This yeah. is David Ayer, and seriously, this is what's kind of troubling with this. This is uh, this is the this this is the white guy living out a gang banger fantasy. This is some real basic gangster revenge type story. And I mean, you know what? Then <clears throat> let's just take uh let's just take the, the barrio and the hood out of yeah. it, man. Because this is just some straight gangster shit. I mean, yeah. this is these could be some could have could have been Italian gangsters. Could have been the mafia, you yeah. know, anything. We always get these stories. People, this is how basic it is. Because we see this shit all the time. We used to see this in black exploitation movies mm -hmm. and everything. So the story that you got here, I mean, it's it it goes by basic gangster formula you know there, there's order among these different families in this case these different gangs some asshole comes in and fuck up the system it gets personal with our so-called protagonist right here mm -hmm. he has to take down said asshole uh said asshole here being actually a true life gangster a rapper named conejo yeah you don't do you remember his name 
which uh, which is funny because that would be like a that would be like a black rapper who's real thuggish called Rabbit. <laughs> <laughs> oh, is that because Conejo is, is is his middle his real middle name? Yeah, yeah, he's that. I think he's a real game banger, man. I oh, I, I guess I just know he's, he's a rapper. Yeah, he's a rapper. Who is that? You know, uh, not bad in the movie, but you know that's his name in real life, Conejo. And is this what you expect from a villain like this? I don't have a problem with his acting. I just, I just the fact that. He's the newest, the biggest, the baddest. He practices Santeria. Boy, <laughs> like, man, is there just a just a bucket of Mexican cliches? It's, yeah, because <laughs> if if there was, <laughs> they're all gone now. <laughs> they all got used up. Yeah, he <laughs> took them all. You know, Martin's right. It goes further. First, oh, another thing, he smokes cigars everywhere, even when he's out there doing mass murders. <laughs> Always got a cigar in his mouth. Oh, and every every meeting you have with someone. Friend or foe, you got to drink tequila shots one after the other. In the club. In the club. Where everybody can hear your shit. You know? <laughs> in the club. Ain't got no back room or nothing out there in the open. Hey, we going to kill each other, right? All right. Yeah. Hey, <laughs> <laughs> Salud. God damn it. Yeah. Yeah. It, 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 Martin's right. The cliche is that he does Santeria, but they say, no, no. But Conejo... He don't do Santeria like everybody else. No, no, he takes it further. Right after he, like, so with Santeria, you usually just pull a chicken up and gut that motherfucker and let the blood drip all over you. But once he, do, after he's done killing the chicken, he like, bring that bitch in. Uh -huh. he, they bring in a chick. They bring in a woman uh -huh. who, by the way, it's like, no, no. no. When she comes in, she's like, like, like happy. Willingly. Yeah, happy, willingly. Yes. Yeah, Conejo, take my spirit. <laughs> <sighs> and he just drowns in that shit. Yeah, it's crazy, man. That's that's they that's why that's that, that's how they want to show you how psychotic and evil he is. And and you gotta go because I'm always looking at the at, at the economics of things because he represents an international cartel. You're running a business like an international cartel. Are you gonna really put somebody like that in charge? Because he's fucking crazy. Yes, because the guy's insane. You know he's got that shit talking, angry craziness going on. Well, everything, you know, he's mad, everything he says, even when he's trying to offer you something. <laughs> right. <laughs> There's a point where he says, join me, arms, and you will experience riches like you never had before. All you have to do is just kiss the ring. And it's like, why the fuck would I want to join you? You're right. obviously insane. Uh -huh. <laughs> you're going to die because you can't run any of this shit because you're crazy. Uh-huh. All right, you're just kind of a, you're, you're a cartoon at this uh -huh. point. Uh-huh. You know, and as for the main hero in this, uh, Bobby Soto plays David. David. Because some of you might think, like, Shia LaBeouf, he's the big name, so he's going to be the one. That's where a lot of people are getting offended, too, because they think, like, oh, you got this guy here who's playing this Mexican in the barrio. Shia LaBeouf is not. He is not the main character. He's not the main character. Bobby Soto is, like Martin said, you know, he's he's supposed to be that that drug cartel uh, uh, dealer with a heart of gold. You know, yeah. hey, look at him. He kissed his kids on the forehead. Yeah. He's cool. Yeah, right, right. They, they try to do that Tony Soprano thing where you go like, well, you relate to him because, <laughs> because he's got a family. He's got the same struggles you got. It's like, <clears throat> partially, except that, you know, I'm not. It's like, nah, man. I'm, look. Not, a, I'm not a scumbag, though. Yeah. Um, and, I, you know, I don't know. I, I feel like the tide is turning like, like maybe – the the first twenty years of the two thousands was all about the anti heroes and loving the villains. Yeah, and now it's more like a, you know, we kind of wake it up and going like these are horrible people. And I don't want to celebrate them, and I don't, I don't want you to try to <clears throat> manipulate me into doing that. Yeah, he just because he's the least horrible person mm -hmm. <laughs> doesn't mean that he's a shitty person because him and his wife because they put people in danger oh, and yeah. then when shit happens they wonder like what's happening I'm so scared maybe because you're a fucking criminal yeah I mean you figure okay well he's the one out there you know doing the gang banging or, or threatening people and collecting money but you get to see that this family they're all benefiting from what he does and they, yeah. and they know about it so, yeah like the wife you know fuck this shit where it's like hey listen I don't know I ain't claiming no uh, David story. David loves his family. David does what he has to yeah. do. So I, I ain't going to act like, hey, I, I'm i not going to act like, hey, you know, he could have avoided this. He could have got a job, could have done something. I ain't going to act like that. You ain't going to be these people out here. Pull yourself up by your bootstrap. No, no, I ain't saying I, that. But oh, no, no, I'm not even saying you saying that. No, I don't want to put that on you at all. No, not at all. But what I'm saying is, is that, hey, look, you know, don't try to make us feel like he's this kind motherfucker mm -hmm. just because we see him waking up in bed with his wife and he's kissing his kids at breakfast and shit. It's like, you know, <clears throat> nah, you know, that. let us see that he's an actual horrible person or 
show us with him trying to get out of some shit. I don't know, but don't don't show those shows where he's taking glee in his job and going around threatening people and shit. He does some good things every now and then, but you know. I mean, I mean, he does some not horrible things every now and then, but. But he he does. I mean, we get to see early on. It's like this ain't this ain't no good dude. <laughs> well, <laughs> you know, to, to be behind. The only thing is, is like what what gets me is like, all right, if these people live a life of crime and they know it, and okay, fine. But like the wife is benefiting from this, like you say, and she gonna start acting surprised and scared, mm-hmm. and when the shit go down, it's like, well, bitch, what you think was gonna happen when you marry a criminal? David, what did you get us into? I'm scared. I don't know crime, <laughs> <laughs> which I've been doing for a living that you know about. It ain't like I've been doing this shit on the side uh-huh. and you didn't know, and all of a sudden uh-huh. you found out. I would feel sorry for right, it, but, right, right. but y'all been putting up, you know, y'all been y- y'all been putting up stacks and. Piling paper and y'all been living large and you all happy about this. You've been putting your kids in danger. And then when the shit go down, it's like, oh, David, what are we going to do? I'm so scared. <laughs> well, you should have been ready for this shit in the first place. You you are a fucking criminal. I can accept you being a criminal and doing what criminals do. But don't expect me to feel bad when the shit goes down. Right. And, yeah, and don't you expect to watch this and feel bad. Because um, bad things happen to people throughout this. And you just kind of don't feel that much about it. Well, see, that's the thing. I don't. And i tell you what. At least... Like I said, I, David Ayer, his whole thing is is at least David is the main character. At least that's what he tells himself. Hey, y'all, yeah. I, I ain't being offensive. Hey, the you know, Shia LaBeouf is only the henchman, the side hand man of the real leader right here, David. But I will tell you this, it is Shia LaBeouf that is making this weird. <laughs> <laughs> not a, not just offensive because it is it is slightly offensive, but he's making it weird. Because one of the things I noticed, because I, I had to go and look, I said, D- does, <laughs> does Shia LaBeouf, does he have, are his, are, are his ears really like that? Uh, I believe not. No, they're, they're not. Yeah, yeah. I looked. People, his ears are weird. I don't know why they gave well, him these well, weird they ears. They gave him cauliflower ears because that's what happens to people who who fight a lot, like like boxers and wrestlers. Because this shit, first of all, let's, you know, let's get past the fact that he looks like the like the white dude that's trolling a Cinco de Mayo party, uh-huh. <laughs> walking in, you know, everybody's celebrating. He's walking in dressed like a goddamn gangster or hood uh-huh. or cholo or some shit. Because it's, because I tell you, it's definitely, it's definitely Halloween every time he steps on. <laughs> this shit turns into a costume party. Uh, is that he's not supposed to be Hispanic. He's supposed to be white. He's, like David Ayer says, no, he's a Jewish guy who's just so steeped in the culture. That's why he talks that way. But it's like, there's never in the movie an explanation of that. And even that's, I mean, I, mean I, I was like, I, this is the impression I'm getting watching it because his accent goes in and out. Because yeah. he starts out with it strong and then later he's just talking like Shia LaBeouf. But he, yeah, he comes in. Hey, Holmes. Yeah. Hey, I got your back, Holmes. And I was like, no, motherfucker, you, you, boy, you ain't Mexican. You a Shia LaBeouf uh-huh. who can't get out of character while you at the fucking costume party uh-huh. <laughs> and didn't realize that the shit was offensive in the first place. Right, right. And I don't care if it, you know, if it's a Jewish person who's so into the, that don't make no difference. I know. That don't make no difference, (laughs) guys. And I'm looking at these goddamn ears and I'm looking at this and I'm like, you know what? His name is Creeper. They should have called his ass Weirdo because these fucking ears are crazy. These two, these two uh, fucking anuses on the side of his, of his head. He should, that don't even look, those don't don't even look like ears anymore. Those look like goddamn, like fish fins or something. Look, he's about to go fight Aquaman. Well, see, I, I, my problem with him, with his character, is that he has all the accoutrement. He's got the cauliflower ears that shows he gets in fights a lot. Yeah. He the the dark glasses. Uh, he talks talks real low. People see him and they're scared of him. Even his name is Creeper. Yeah. There's there's visions of what he could do. But he doesn't actually do shit. They don't show. He get his ass whooped. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's yeah, the only but, time. But, we... but for all the talk about, oh man, this, this guy's a badass. I was like, I ain't seen him actually do nothing. Matter of fact, him. yeah, he's scary in the first scene he comes in, and after that, I'm just like, all right, this isn't like having a, a psycho with you. This is just like having Shia LaBeouf tagging along with you. I don't have a problem with this character being white and hanging out in the hood. I don't have a problem with that. I have a problem with a white character, you know, uh, being one of the leads in a hood movie like this. But, you know, uh, uh, in hanging out with Chicano gangsters. But that accent is where things start to get a little offensive. Sure. You did not need that accent for this character. That's true. He's a, they acknowledge that this is a this is a white guy, by the way, with no backstory in the movie Mm-mm. at all. And when it's, you know, and 
it's the, it, it gets offensive because it goes in and out. He's obviously white. There's no need for him to talk this way. We don't know, if, like, again, we don't know if he was raised by gangsters as a baby or some shit, <laughs> but it just starts to sound weird when he comes in like, hey, Holmes, I got your back. It sounds like a poser. Uh-huh. Again, it sounds like somebody at a fucking party who doesn't know how insensitive they're being. Uh-huh. And everybody's, and while he thinks he's cool, everybody's saying, take that shit off. Yeah. Can you get your friend and take him home? Because he would tell his other friends, no, man, I go, I just blend in. <laughs> no, no, hey man, hey, hey, introduce me to your essays. It's like, no, get the f- out of my car and go change. You be you. Go take that shit off. Go take that shit You're not off embarrass right me now. in front of my friends. Because I said, as I said, Air, no, David Air, he says that this is uh, this is not offensive what this character is doing because uh, him being white because he's a side character. Uh, but like I said, it'd be one thing we got some backstory on that. But it, but really what it is, come on, y'all, it's, it's David Ayer putting himself. Mm. That character is him. Yeah. That's him putting himself in the movie. Yeah. You know, it's obvious that that's David Ayer. It feels like, and, and like I said earlier before, it feels like David Ayer is acting out his fantasies of being a hood Latino, mm-hmm. a hood Chicano. And like I say, while I say that this is a very straightforward character, uh, gangster movie i was surprised at how violent this shit got yeah that's its thing it it was so talking about you know all the violence and not really doing anything and then when it decides to do shit it just goes straight for torture porn people they, this thing is gory not yeah. just not just violent it gets gory it revels in it yeah that's the problem for me you know there's a there's a moment where look i don't i like gore i like blood I even, you know, I, I even like it outside of horror. You know, I like, I, I like a good bloody, uh, you know, crime flick every now and then. I don't mind that. But with with this, uh, you know, it caught me off guard with how gory it was getting for no particular for reason. No, for no reason, because Quentin Tarantino can get gory, or he can really make your stomach churn. But yeah. there's always a reason. You like, like you come, you walk away, you're like, whew, that that scene got me. You feel some suspense or something. Yeah, but this was just like. All right, not you, you just doing this because you're a little kid having fun. Yeah, this wasn't even this wasn't even called for. Boy, they, there's a scene where they they, they in a in a minivan, some shit you go pick up your your girls from soccer. And uh-huh. <laughs> That's insulting right there. God, they put me out in this minivan, but they they gotta do they scraping his face on the road while they're speeding down the highway on in a minivan, and they pull him back up, and his, and I thought like, oh, this is a movie. They just gonna make it look like he's burned or something. His yeah. face was gone. Yeah. Yeah, like, like like teeth showing. Yeah, yeah, it was some like I always say, it was some skeletal shit uh-huh. happening. He looked like you know he looked like he looked like fucking uh, Two Face from yeah, The yeah, Dark Knight. Yeah, yeah. I was like Jesus, but there's moments where near the end, these characters because there's more characters that come in. I'm not gonna tell you what happens, but the, the, a lot of characters come in in the name of justice. <laughs> In the name of the doing the right thing, and they don't care about fucking justice or doing the right thing. They just love killing people. Yeah, yeah. Because there was, I mean, yeah. For the for the big shootout, there's some unlikely allies that join in what they describe as what's going to be a suicide mission for no no discernible reason. Right? Yeah. <laughs> like, like when they lay out what they're going to do, and they're like, and we're going to do this for justice. You're like. But this ain't got nothing to do. This makes no sense. Yeah, it only makes sense if it was we're bloodthirsty and we just want a good reason. And yeah. then I was like, you know what? If you just said that, I, I'd go with it. I'd be like, hey, you you laid out a reason. I believe it. You're following through. Yeah, that's what happens, man. The violence makes it hard to get into these characters. Because these characters are a bunch of fucking sociopaths. Yeah. <laughs> like they start out trying to help my man. Uh-huh. David, and uh-huh. then after after a while, there's a moment where you see them killing people. And they're just like, <laughs> you should have kept your ass in Mexico. It's like, man, you just like this. Yeah. That's why you agreed to do it. You're like you say, like y'all just want to kill some. Yeah, because <laughs> y'all are fucking crazy too. Because think about it, they were at a party chilling, having a good time. <laughs> sure were, boy. Said, I need y'all to help me kill some people. I know I ain't part of your crew, but it sure would help. All right, fellas, we are we doing this? Let's. <laughs> Cut the party. We 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 gonna go kill. Yeah, the whole and, like none of them thought. Not, like it's 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 a it's a leader that comes out. And his whole thing is like, you know, we need to do this, y'all, because this right here, 
this is a good man. Yeah. <laughs> one person should have said, you, anybody want to think this through a little bit? <laughs> right. Now, now there's going to be some heavy hitters. Yeah. With, you know, with, and they're going to have choppers. We might not make it to that. We not make it. My, 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 this might be a one-way trip. But this, this, but this, this is a good man right here. <laughs> he ain't a good man if he about to get my black ass killed. Exactly. He ain't that goddamn good. If he was good, he wouldn't have been here in the first place uh-huh. asking for this shit. <laughs> <laughs> a good man would be at home right now chilling with his family instead of asking us to get some guns and die tonight. Got your fucking money. Is, is anybody disagreeing? Anybody don't, don't understand this? Hey, oh, <laughs> oh, oh, no. We get to kill some some people? Yep, let's go. Got your boy Hector up in here. <laughs> I always love seeing him. <laughs> David A., he's another one of the Ayers players. He, yeah. <laughs> him and Shia. Yeah, the A- I love that. The Ayers players. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome. Yeah, Holmes, the Ayers players. Your boy Hector, who always plays Hector. Hector, yeah. It's funny because I looked to see if they did this and they didn't even bother to put him in the credits. They were like, man, you know who he is. We ain't gonna even waste no time trying to put Hector up in the credits. Y'all know him by now. He plays Hector in every goddamn thing he's in. He does. Y'all know who this fool is. <laughs> yeah, Hector. This fool has been Hector in everything he's been in, man. It is the easiest acting job right? he's ever had because he plays himself. And I, you know, this, this is offensive. It's basic, as we said. You've seen this all before. Uh, the thing is, but you know, listen. Uh, at, at best, it's just really just an okay, okay, about as okay as you can get of an action film. I'm talking about low key okay, uh, because it can hold your interest probably while you're watching it at home. You know, I mean, it's, if anything, going to be sitting up there for an hour trying to figure out is that Shia LaBeouf. <laughs> you know, it's. <laughs> but I just wish. David Ayer would just kind of move on, yeah. you know, because, you know, step away from this hood shit, this Latino hood shit, because this is starting to feel like a fetish now, mm-hmm. in a way. That's, that, that's the exact word I would use. Because he can do other things, as we know. I mean, he did at least one other thing, because I forgot, because it wasn't like no hood Latino shit in there. I forgot that he did the World War II uh, tank movie, Fury. I started this war killing Germans in Africa. Now I'm killing Germans in Germany. You know he probably had that tank on rims and hydraulics and shit <laughs> before somebody said, "Hey, take that shit off." Yeah, they, that, none of that was invented back then. Yeah, <laughs> are you sure? The the tank was purple and shit. <laughs> I I like Fury a lot though, man. Yeah, me too. Where he worked with Shia LaBeouf in that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it was it was it was a uh, that was a good movie. So and y'all know Training Day is one of my favorite movies, which he wrote. He didn't direct. Right, right. Anton Fuqua wrote, uh, directed that. Uh, yeah, but when he, at the time, did you know that he was just going to keep doing that same thing? No, I didn't. I, I knew he had a problem right. back then. I might thought different. I might not even try to enable his ass. Right. Yeah, you encouraged him to keep I going. Sure did enabler over here. Just you know, on 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 the cool though, I would tell you, on, uh, he he does try to actually bring money back to the hood. You know, he does a lot of shit that a lot of people don't want to do, especially a lot of people in Hollywood. So I'll give him credit for this. He brings money back to the hood. He tries to, like, hire a lot of Latino and, and black people, a lot of brown and black people to work not only in front of the camera, but also behind the camera. So, you know, I I, I can't appreciate that. But, you know, it's still, it's just, it's just, it's this thing where... You, I'm glad that you're helping out the hood, but when you glorify hood violence like you do, especially where it seems like it's coming from a place of, you know, white guy fantasies of wanting to be in that culture, it's a little problematic in a way. You know, like I said, I don't, I don't hate the movie, man, I, 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 but I don't like it. I tell you that much. Uh, I give it a, you know, I'm giving this, I'm giving it a rental, man. Because, uh, I, like I said, I've seen some movies. It's uh, he, he does put, he. He does put a, 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 all of the Latino people up front. I don't like the way he glorifies the life and everything, but you know that life is out there. But I don't, you know, I know today we like, hey, we need some positivity out here too. Yeah, yeah, that 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 that's what it comes down to for me. It's, I mean, I don't need to see more black drug dealers. I I, I actually need you to stop yeah. making that everybody's default image. Like like I'm over the Shia LaBeouf thing. 
I was just more like, <clears throat> can we please stop just projecting these same images and just romanticizing this kind of this criminal yeah. culture? Yeah. And, and <clears throat> just as as you say, as a gangster movie, it's just it's just weak because it's it's sort of all over the place. It's it, even as far as like what it's trying to 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 say. So that so all this that could have meant something is just like a little three minute conversation between two characters at the very end. And you're like, man, this is just too little, too late. There's so much that you're trying to do here, and if if any of it could have been focused on and some of the bullshit left out. Uh, maybe we could have had something. Maybe something that that would make me even like you know bypass looking at at the 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 negative image that's put out here. But as it stands, it's just not enough to counteract it. It yeah, I like you like you said it is not without its entertainment value. Yeah, but I can't say I liked it. It's it's more of a I don't know. It's more of a low rental for me. Yeah, low rental. Yeah, that's why I'm I'm with you on that. I think. Bobby Soto is a, a, a decent enough leading man actor where he can go on to other things. Bobby Soto, actually, you know what? I should even mention that. He's got charisma. Bobby Soto was was actually really good in this. Mm-hmm. I thought he was really good. And, and, and I like that David Ayer put, again, put him up front and center because there's scenes in there where Shia LaBeouf, Shia LaBeouf is a great actor. I'll give him that. And he's, I mean, he, look, he's doing his job. And Shia LaBeouf, you know, he's so out there that he'll usually just kind of He'll come in and just take the scene. Yeah. But Bobby Soto was taking those scenes away from him. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So yeah, man, this is you know yeah I'm with you on that. It's a low rental, man. It's like it's as far as a it's functional as a as a just a you know a, a waste of time gangster flick. Yeah. <laughs> but other than that, nah, man. And really, David Ayer, it's you know somebody I know I get it. You're trying to bring your your claim is I'm bringing uh, money to the hood. And I'm putting people. In business in the hood, you know, I'm 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 doing things that Hollywood won't. But you know what you're doing? What Hollywood does do, or what Hollywood does do, you're stereotyping all these characters that people mm-hmm. have been trying to get away from for yeah, years. For years, and it's really not helping. So man. many stereotypes in one movie, and really, it's coming from your place. I I'm sorry, man. I'm just gonna call it. I, okay, so you've been look. You probably in more hood than I am. You were raised there at the tender age of 17, I guess, or 16, whatever. But still, man, you know what? This is something that you you you. These movies are you living out your fantasies. Well, it's, it's like his head has been so steeped in that that he hasn't poked it up to see that the world has kind of changed or moved on past that. We we don't we don't need that no more. Yeah. Uh, but more than the movie, this man needs some help. Get this man. <laughs> get him to a. Get him to a clinic or something. Just make him watch a bunch of French New Wave. <laughs> <laughs> he's in rehab. He's gonna watch these old movies. I think he's a great writer, man. Uh, I've seen him. You know, he's of course he's done some great stuff. I mean, I know not to talk shit about him. This man, you know, when he's at his peak, he's at his awesome. Sure. He's, he's he's awesome. But this right here, this man, he he could have wrote this shit. He shat this movie out of yeah. at least the script. Because if you're somebody who goes like, well, I like Street Kings, and that's not a great crime movie, but it's good. No, no, Street Kings is very entertaining. Yeah. This ain't Street Kings. No. <laughs> <laughs> it ain't Street Queen, ain't Street Prince, ain't Street uh, 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 Joker, ain't none of that shit. <laughs>